Water is one of the world's most valuable resources. Developed countries take clean water for granted, but according to experts, 10,000 people die every day from water-related diseases. Lack of clean water, proper sanitation, and hygiene kills a child every 15 seconds. A staggering 1.1 billion people across the globe live without access to drinking water. Most of them are from developing countries. So when you wake up in the morning, you don't know if you're going to get water or not. Okay? So you might get water every other day, you might get water every day, you might get water every third day. By the year 2030, over 60% of the world's population will live in cities. And those who study water issues worry that climate change, population growth, and increased urbanization will make it even more difficult for people to have access to clean water. The way in which we manage water has to change. Dr. Kalanithi Vairavamuthi, or Kala for short, knows firsthand what it's like to live without regular supply of clean water. We wouldn't get water every day of the week, and so we would have to conserve the water that we had. Born in Sri Lanka, Kala grew up in a household where water is the family business. His father was a water engineer who studied at UNESCO IHE, a leading international institute for water education in the Netherlands in the 1960s. Kala himself studied civil engineering and received a master's in public health engineering and a PhD in environmental engineering from Imperial College in London. His doctoral research focused on the scarcity of water and took him on extended research missions to India, where a shower meant pouring water over yourself with a cup, where bathing took place at a well so you didn't have to carry the water from a central pumping station, which only had running water one hour a day. In 2004, Kala returned to Sri Lanka after the devastating tsunami. He worked in the refugee camps training the locals on how to test contaminated wells and on how to empty and disinfect them. Kala helped create water and sanitation systems for the refugee camps in the northeast region of the tsunami's impact area. It was probably the best, best three or four weeks I've spent in my entire life somewhere, you know, where you really felt everything you'd learned in the classroom came together and that you could really see the impact that you were having. In 2005, Kala followed his father's footsteps and became a professor at UNESCO IHE. While there, he was appointed as the scientific director for SWITCH, one of the largest international urban water research projects in history. It had 33 partners in 15 countries with 12 cities actively participating around the world. The five-year-long $35 million project funded by the European Union focused on finding a better way to manage water in the city of the future. Unlike other types of research, it focuses a lot on practice and connecting with stakeholders. Um, all too often, there's a lot of research done, but it really stays within the academic realm. And SWITCH really made an effort to connect the research with the practice. Dr. Daniel Ye is with the University of South Florida's College of Engineering, where he researches water treatment and recycling, as well as recovering resources such as energy and nutrients from wastewater. Ye is also a research fellow with the Patel Center for Global Solutions at USF, and he applied the switch method in Dunedin, Florida. In 2010, Ye helped convince Kala to come to the University of South Florida as the founding director of the Patel School of Global Sustainability and the director of the Patel Center for Global Solutions at USF. I wanted something that counts, that matters. When you have invested so much in your time and efforts and resources and all, you want that to continue. The Patel Center for Global Solutions was established in 2005 with an $18.5 million gift from Drs. Kiran and Pallavi Patel. The Patels have a long history of supporting health, education, and art initiatives, as well as research at USF and globally. The vision for the center that carries their name is very clear. It has to produce not just research, but also actual tangible solutions to the world's problems. I think my wife put it nicely that let's make sure we have a do tank and not a think tank. It's very easy to write dreams of paper, postulate theories, and debate in a classroom. But how does that impact in the real world? What change can you make in the real world? 
That is what is important. That important work starts at 7.30 in the morning when Kala's senior research team comes together for their daily meeting. This team has members from Ethiopia, Uganda, China, Nepal and Germany. The group describes itself as a mini United Nations. Joachim Eckhart studies urban drainage systems. He first met Kala in 2007 in Germany and soon followed him to England to finish his PhD work with Kala. Three years later, Joachim and his wife Sabine moved again, this time following Kala to Florida. As a matter of fact, his entire research team moved with Kala to the University of South Florida so they could be part of the Patel Center for Global Solutions. I wanted to continue my work with Kala. This was the basic idea. I wanted to continue to work with him. Their work is distinctly multidisciplinary and draws strength from USF's broad expertise in sustainability and its world-class roster of researchers. Through the Patel School of Global Sustainability, it focuses on training current and future leaders through graduate programs with concentrations in water, entrepreneurship, energy, and sustainable tourism. There's a huge demand from our students to, to learn how to take green innovation to the marketplace. They have some really great ideas, and we want to try and strengthen their understanding of the technology development itself. But then we also want to help them understand how to create a business plan, how to market it, how to raise capital, how to convert this idea into a real business. The first year of the master's program is spent on coursework and in the classrooms. After that, the students go on to international internships. They take courses in anthropology, public health, engineering, business, uh, other areas. They're able to bring all these things together in, in, um, into their international internship and apply that in an in international global context. For example, students can go on to the Netherlands and learn about weather-sensitive urban design that allows water to inundate a community in a flood-prone area without devastating it, or where amphibious houses float with the rising water levels. Or if they are interested in innovative solutions for water problems in developing countries, they can choose from various locations in Africa, Southeast Asia, and South America. Here they can get hands-on experience in water quality testing as well as sanitation challenges and solutions. I think this gives them a competitive edge. You know, while they're over there, they're making uh, connections with international partners, uh, NGOs, businesses. That will likely you know, help them on their next, next step in their career. The Patel Center for Global Solutions also organizes the annual Patel Grand Challenge competition. These annual challenges will be looking for real out-of-the-box solutions to some of the serious water problems we have around the world. The Patel Challenge is modeled after the One Laptop Per Child program, which created a rugged and energy-efficient $100 netbook computer for children in developing countries. I think there's, there's an opportunity for us to develop a $100 treatment system where people in developing countries will have access to a relatively sophisticated technology, like say a membrane-based system, but that that system will be robust and rugged and will operate in all types of conditions, but it will allow people in developing countries to have access to affordable water supplies in a sustainable fashion. For USF, the Patel Center for Global Solutions and the Patel School of Global Sustainability offer a chance to achieve lasting change around the world. The school proudly graduated its first 12 Master of Arts in Global Sustainability students in August 2011. We realize that as we prepare leaders for the, uh, the next generation, that the world that they're in, they'll enter into is quite different from the world that we entered into uh, in, in years past. USF's provost and executive vice president Ralph Wilcox says the university is uniquely positioned to help transform urban life, turning challenges into opportunities while reducing our ecological footprints. We are the first and at this moment in time the only school of global sustainability in the United States. We, uh, we think we've positioned ourselves, ourselves in a, uh, a special niche in higher education one that, uh, again, will provide incredibly um, competitive advantage uh, for our students as they venture out into the marketplace and uh, become the next generation of green-collar workers in the United States and beyond. It's a challenging mission that requires a totally new way of thinking, where sustainability always comes first. And for me, you know, it's, it's the young that are going to create the change. 
And, and I believe that here at USF we are really creating those champions of change.